All right, guys, so have you ever wondered how the top Fortnite pros like Booga and Benji Fishy consistently play well in tournaments while making it look easy? Bunch of Crunch Army, where you at? Listen, today we're gonna be showing you some of the best strategies and techniques that you can use to propel yourself up through the ranks. If you're frustrated with yourself, just know that a baby crawls first before a baby walks, and sometimes we gotta crawl before we can walk. So enjoy the journey. You guys ready for the video? Let's get this going. All right, guys, so before we get into how you can become the sort of player who consistently ranks up amongst the best of the best, you're gonna have to understand exactly how the scoring system works in Fortnite tournaments. All right, so as a lot of you probably already know this, the scoring system works by giving you points based on how much time you spend alive in game relative to you know the other players in your game. Basically, the longer that you and your team manage to survive, the more points you're gonna be getting. So the difference between finishing a match in 17th place and 16th place might only be like one point difference, but the difference in points between second and actually managing to secure the victory royale is gonna be a lot more. So your placement in each game is vital and really staying alive as long as possible should be your ultimate goal. And that's not all you have to worry about though, all right? Like staying alive is all well good and dandy, I get it. But just staying alive won't give you enough points to really rank up there with the best of the best like you're gonna have to make the most of your time on the fortnite island during each match and that means being able to sneak in a couple of eliminations as well enabling you to increase your points even more throughout the match so tarping also known as tunneling is a vital technique for building as you enter the late game all right i get it it sounds simple i mean how difficult can it be to just build a tunnel around yourself as you rotate through to the next zone right well the fact of the matter is this tarping isn't actually always that simple there's plenty of terrain differences across the fortnite island ranging from water to uphill scenarios and much more now and being prepared for all of them is so vital since the chances are that you're going to experience at least two or three of them in every tournament so if you don't have you know a few tarping methods under your belt then you're not tarping correctly so a great way to really get your tarping skills down is by using a map that was made by the legendary map creator tito all right so this map is going to help fine tune your tarping and building your skills by placing you in a bunch of different realistic scenarios where you have to tarp to safety there is an uphill scenario, a water scenario, a downhill scenario, a mix scenario which throws multiple different terrain types at you at the same time. You know, it's really a great map to use to get your tarping, building, and editing abilities up to scratch. So we put the map code down in the description of this video so you could definitely check that out. 6984-9603. 6912. If you're still struggling at tarping, like even when you're done with the map, you should definitely check out ProGuys.com where you can try out our master classes or innovative VOD review system to improve super fast. Being able to find an uncontested landing spot that you can learn like the back of your hand, it's going to save you all the hassle from those risky moments of having to 50-50 somebody when they try to steal your chest in those vital moments after dropping from the bus, right? Finding a good drop spot isn't as easy as it sounds. Like, as a matter of fact, the seven most popular EU players are all landing at the same spot for this FNCS. Why are they doing that? Who knows? The fact of the matter is this. It's going to lead to some pretty messy 50-50 situations. Ooh, exactly the sort of thing that you want to avoid in the early game of a Fortnite tournament, by the way. Having a good landing spot that you go back to time and time again means that you can build up a routine and really become comfortable with your surroundings. You're, you're going to know where everything is. You're going to know where all the potential threats from or you know other players can really come from. And you're going to be able to secure yourself more and more early game success. That's what we all want. So a good technique, bunch of crunch army, for finding a really perfect drop spot is through reviewing your games. You know, play a game in a tourney or a cash cup, and then after the game is over, go into replay mode, all right? Open up the map and really observe where everybody is on the map and where they're landing. Try and find a spot where no one or not a lot of people really land again. And if you're lucky, you might end up finding a spot you're really comfortable with. All right, so to give you an idea of what might make the perfect drop spot, we're gonna give you an overview of a spot that we like just northwest of Holly Hedges. This drop spot contains an NPC character that you can earn a weapon upgrade from as well as score bounties from as well. It also has a place that you can just farm 450 brick from and even guaranteed slurp truck so you can just get some easy early game shields. Then as you rotate further south, you're even gonna come across an NPC with a compact SMG. So having a solid job spot like this will increase your chances of staying alive through the early game and it's gonna really set you up for success throughout the rest of the game. 
All right, bunch of crunch time. It's time for the question of the day. What do you struggle with the most when it comes to getting higher placements in your tournament games? Let us know down below. All right, so at the moment in Fortnite, there aren't actually that many ways for you to be able to just quickly move from one area to another. And at the start of the season, Epic decided to vault a lot of the holdable movement items and then took away even more in competitive specifically. So in comp, all we're left now with are bouncers, you know, hot peppers, and consumable zero point rocks. So being low on movement options means that we need to rely even heavier on what we do have, and that means you need to know exactly how to take advantage of these limited items to really save you both a ton of health and building materials. Bouncers are the perfect tool to really get you out of a pinch in the middle of a build fight especially. Are you settling like too high up? Well, dropping a bouncer down to give you fall damage immunity is the right play to make. They're also great for just getting out of the storm as well, like placing on down vertically and then springing away is an excellent substitute if you don't have any zero point rocks nearby. Hot peppers are also a great often underrated movement tool. The extra speed that they give you, whew, once again, great for avoiding the storm. I love it, I use it all the time. I save it for those moments. Like the extra speed that they give you is, man, it's amazing, right? But they can also throw your opponents off in the middle of a fight making you much harder to just really keep track of and really hard to aim at. So never underestimate the usefulness of a movement item in Fortnite. They can really save you a ton of hassle during these crowded end zones and mid game rotates. All right, so now we get it, right? Being able to pop off and creative and wagers makes you feel pretty good, I get it. But believe it or not, being a strictly mechanically gifted player doesn't actually mean that you're gonna place high in cash cups and tournaments. In fact, some of the top pros aren't even as cracked as you might think. So what do I mean by being mechanically skilled? Hmm. All right, I'm basically talking about all you creative warriors out there. All right, here we go. The people with insane editing skills, right? Incredible building skills, who are you? I see you. An absolutely cracked aim, I see you too. Now, don't get me wrong guys, like all of these things are very, very important. They really, really are, but they'll mean a lot less if you don't have a dope top tier game sense. Like, having game sense means being smart about the plays that you make during your matches. For instance, like, thinking about when you should or shouldn't push, where you should or shouldn't go, and instinctively knowing where other players are going to be coming from. You know, when you're playing your matches, you need to try and really think carefully about the decisions that you're gonna make. And if you aren't doing this already and are basically just playing purely instinctively, then I can guarantee that the moment that you start putting a little bit of thought into your actions, you know, you're gonna start improving in tournaments, like drastically. And the only way to really improve on this aspect of the game is really by playing in high ranking arena matches or scrims and, and avoid playing creative a little bit too much. The fights that you have in creative are not realistic when you compare them to the fights that you're gonna have in a high ranking arena match. And if you play creative too much, you're gonna build up all the wrong kinds of muscle memory as well. And it really just won't serve you well in real games. So another reason that you really shouldn't get used to playing in creative is that, you know, at least for the majority of players, playing in creative lobbies will give you substantially lower ping. When you switch back to regular online matches, you're going to need to readjust. And, you know, that will have an impact on how well you play. Also, since you're going to be grinding out an arena, you're going to end up slowly rising through the ranks of arena, which will allow you to play in more of the tournaments that Epic will offer. And all in all, you know, it's a win-win, right? Like creative might be a great way to warm up, but it's just not a realistic environment to really practice for cash cups and other tournaments. So over the course of the last year, Fortnite players have really started to understand how important it is to have control over builds, especially having more control over builds than your opponent does. It also allows you to edit on them and really eliminate them quickly and effectively. This is gonna give you guys more control over your fights and it's gonna result in you winning a lot more of them. All right, so we're not gonna go into peace control too much in this video because we recently released a video all about peace control drills that will help you master everything that you need to know about the topic. And if you wanna become a peace control legend, then you need to check out this video. All right, guys, so the final tip, if you guys need any more help when it comes to placing higher, then you can always check out the rest of our channel for more incredible tips and tricks. Hey, guys, if you guys liked the video, you already know what to do. Subscribe to the channel. Spread the word. At 1 million subscribers, we're releasing my story on how your motivation guy made it to where I'm at today. It's going to be so inspiring. I can't wait for you to check it out. All right, I'll see you soon.